Depending on your definition of the Lord Almighty, you could argue that mankind has done many things which amount to us playing God. Curing the sick, building nukes, and dressing up in robes while making a cloud fortress out of pillows. But realistically, the acts of DNA editing, weather control, and the creation of artificial life do seem like the realm of deities more than men. And can we legitimately include a mission to Mars on this list? Oh yes, we can! Because, having taken a few tips on fear-mongering straight from Fox News, we now present you this video on the seven times science played God. At number seven, resurrecting the dead. Animals go extinct for a reason. Either they're naturally too weak to survive changes to their habitat, they fail to adapt to the threat of predators, or we humans find them too darn delicious when paired with a lovely dipping sauce. But when an animal's demise is the fault of mankind, is this a natural occurrence, or should we intervene and do something about it? Should we go above Mother Nature's head and bring extinct species back from the dead? Well, we've tried to several times already. The Pyrenean Ibex was a type of goat that died out in January 2000. But since then, we've tried to resurrect it using harvested DNA and cloning technology. A clone of the last ever Ibex was born in 2003, but died 10 minutes after birth. However, attempts are currently ongoing to repeat the test, and scientists are hopeful that improvements in cloning technology mean the next time proves successful. Other candidates for revival include the dodo, the woolly mammoth, aurochs, and the toxodon. But should we interfere with natural selection in this way? Or are the dead best left well alone? And when are we getting dinosaurs? At 6. Weather Control The idea that man can manipulate the weather seems like comic book fair to many, but it's true. We humans can genuinely command the heavens above us. Cloud seeding is a technique whereby silver iodide or other small particles are sprayed onto clouds to increase or decrease rainfall. And this was used in January 2011 to create 50 artificial rainstorms in the United Arab Emirates, with similar methods also used by the Chinese in 2008 to produce rainfall for their Olympics. Lasers, soot, and liquid nitrogen have also been posed as possible ways of reducing the ferocity of hurricanes and heavy storms. And although this technology is still in its infancy, the power we do possess is enough to make the United Nations stand up and take notice. During the Vietnam War, the United States Operation Popeye used cloud seeding to extend the monsoon season and hamper the Viet Cong, with such actions now banned by the UN. Not that this has stopped the US from continuing to develop weather modification weaponry as their HARP system is apparently capable of triggering earthquakes and tsunamis on the other side of the world. And it's not just conspiracy theorists who are worried about this, as the European Union has also expressed doubts about the safety of the HARP program. So what exactly are the world's superpowers capable of when it comes to controlling the weather? And will we only find out when it's already too late? 5. Artificial Life in 2010, biologist Dr. Craig Venter was the only man on Earth who could legitimately claim to have created life without the use of his pee-pee, when he used laboratory-assembled genes to generate the world's first-ever synthetic cell. Dr. Venter and his team achieved this by rebooting a microbe after transplanting it into a set of genetic code sequences built entirely from scratch. The completed chromosome was based on an existing bacterium, and then transplanted into a different bacterium. In essence, its cells were brought to life completely artificially. To prove their work, the scientists even signed their names in the DNA using coded strings, and throwing a few famous quotes in there just for the heck of it. This was a major breakthrough at the time, and in January 2017, scientists at the Scripps Research Institute 
built upon this work by creating the first stable semi-synthetic organism. Combining the traditional G, T, A, and C bases with two synthetic ones, X and Y. So where does this stop? Or do we keep on going until the lines between man and God are blurred completely? Are we already on the road towards building our own custom life forms to serve us for work, entertainment, and pleasure? <laughs> oh, I do hope so. At number four, the Hadron Collider. Does the Large Hadron Collider exist as yet another example of humanity playing God? Creating life and faffing with clouds is one thing, but at CERN, they've made their own mini Big Bang. They have a machine that can potentially create a black hole, and if you believe reports from August 2016, we might have ripped through the very fabric of time itself. I mean, I'm totally ready to do the time warp again if you guys are game, but you have to wonder if these experiments are the kind of thing that repeatedly wipes out life across the universe. Is this the reason we've yet to meet extraterrestrial civilizations? Before they get a chance to venture off for a cosmic meet and greet, do advanced life forms have the propensity to get too big for their boots and destroy themselves? At 3. Louise Joy Brown the work of Dr. Craig Venter was somewhat preempted by Leslie and John Brown, who in 1978 also created life in an artificial manner courtesy of their daughter, Louise. Louise Joy Brown was the world's first test tube baby, with her birth coming as the result of in vitro fertilization treatment, which involves the combination of human sperm and egg in a laboratory dish, with the successful embryo then being transplanted into a woman's uterus. You know how you sometimes get your cat and dog to kiss by forcing their faces together? It's like that. Except more sciencey. Louise Joy Brown was born via cesarean section just before midnight on July 25, 1978. And this development was so shocking to 1970s folk that her mother, Leslie, received blood-spattered hate mail afterwards. With one package even including a plastic fetus. The Pope at the time had himself expressed doubts about where this technology was heading, with the papers full of talk of Franken-babies and women's wombs being used as human baby factories. But in the years since this development, there have been millions of successful IVF births, and Louise Brown continues to live happily to this day with two naturally born children of her own. I guess playing God can have a happy ending after all. Number 2. Customized Humans The CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing tool is something we've spoken about several times on this channel, as this revolutionary technique offers humanity its first real chance to genetically manipulate life in a way that's fast, cheap, and easy, just like your mom. But unlike your dear mother, this tool has the potential to be useful and dangerous too, with the creation of new cures and new diseases both entirely plausible. We're also on the cusp of being able to genetically engineer human babies, allowing mankind to customize its kids for the first time in history. The next Louise Brown moment will probably come in the form of the world's first genetically edited child, and based on recent developments, it seems more than likely that he or she will be Chinese. In October 2016, a team based at the Szechuan University became the first to inject CRISPR-Cas9 edited cells into a human being as part of a clinical trial aimed at curing the patient's lung cancer. This event was seen as the first step in a biological equivalent of the space race, with a genetic competition now fully underway between China and the United States, with the winner's prize being a race of genetically altered supermutant babies. And at number one, Mission to Mars. This final one is just a quick entry, as it not so much veers on the theoretical but fully dives headfirst into a ridiculously incredible concept. When mankind first ventured into space, we were fighting against the laws of gravity, and in doing so, we left the confines of our home planet for the very first time. Taking steps on the moon was a continuation of this story, and if the fragrantly named supervillain Elon Musk has his way, then the next chapter will involve a trip to Mars. 
but will we be allowed to stray so far from Earth? The entire premise of this video is based on the idea of God, and if it exists. Are we stepping on his or her toes? If humanity is controlled by someone or something, be it a supernatural being, an advanced civilization, or the confines of a simulated world, then at what point will we be stopped from exploring our surroundings? Is it Mars? Is it our solar system? Where is that line drawn? Because if humanity is indeed the creation of something greater than ourselves, there surely will be a limit to how far we can go. Meaning that we humans are nothing more than a dog unable to stray too far from its owner. And that's our list. But there were many more examples of man playing God that we could have included if we'd had the time. NASA has created artificial interstellar dust, a Chinese experiment managed to produce working human sperm outside the body, and an American company called BioQuark is currently attempting to resurrect brain-dead people. If you want to see a sequel to this video with those stories and more, then sweet talk is in the comments below and maybe we'll treat you real nice. But in the meantime, why not take a look at our recent video on the recent craziest scientific breakthroughs, where we cover the semi-synthetic organism story and the problems it poses to the title of the movie Gattaca.